In this video, we'll create this Inkscape seal logo and give it a nice textured display. To start, I'll go to the Circles and Ellipses tool, hold down the Control key and create a large circle. I'll give it a dark gray fill and lower the opacity to about 50% for now. Now I'll go to the Select tool and I'll duplicate the circle with Control D. Then while holding down Shift and Control, I'll scale this one down just a bit. I'll duplicate again, hold Shift and Control and scale this one down even more. And I'll repeat this one more time. Right now I'll select the largest circle, then hold shift and also select the next largest one and I'll go to path difference to cut the top selected circle out of the bottom one. Now I'll select the two smaller circles and I'll do a difference with the shortcut control minus. Right now I'll select both of these paths and raise their opacity back up to 100%. Okay next I'll go back to the circles and ellipses tool and while holding down shift and control I'll create a small circle starting near the center of the paths. I'll give this one a red stroke by holding shift and clicking the red color swatch down here and I'll turn off the fill color by clicking the X here on the left. I'll use this circle for getting the text onto the logo. However, I want the circle to be perfectly centered in here, so I'll go to the select tool and select everything. Open the align distribute dialog with this button up here and align the objects vertically and horizontally. Alright, now I'll go to the text tool and I'll create a text object over here with the word Inkscape. For the font, I'll go with Railway, which I found for free at fonts.google.com. And I'll set the style to Heavy. Okay, and in order to make it easier to center the text on the circle, I'll set the alignment of the text here to Centered. Alright, now I'll go to the Select tool, hold Control and scale up the text a bit. And I'll give the text a white fill for now. Okay, to put the text on the circle with a red stroke, I'll select both the text object and the circle, and go to text, put on path. Now I can deselect everything and select just the circle, click it again to show the rotation handles, then hold either control or alt and rotate it 90 degrees. Now I'll click the circle again to go back to the scale handles, hold shift and control and scale up the circle until the text is centered in the dark gray path. Okay, and at the moment, there isn't enough space between the letters. So I'll select the text object, press the T key to switch to the text tool, then I'll go up here and click the spacing box and I'll use the spacing between letters box to add some spacing. That should work. Okay, next I want to cut the text out of the gray path. To do this, I'll first go to the select tool and turn the text object into a path by going to path, object to path. This gives me a group of paths, which I need to ungroup by pressing shift control G. Now I'll turn these paths into a single path by going to path, union. Next I'll hold shift and select the gray path under the text and I'll do a difference with control minus. Alright for the bottom text, I'll go back to the text tool and I'll create a text object with Inkscape's catchphrase, draw freely. For the font, I'll use railway again, but this time I'll use bold for the style. I also want to make sure to set the alignment to centered. Now I'll go to the select tool, scale up the text object while holding control and make it white for now. Okay, now I can select both the text object and the circle with a red stroke and go to text, put on path. This put the text at the top of the circle, but of course I want it to be at the bottom. However, if I select just the circle and try to rotate it so that the text is at the bottom, the text will be upside down. So I'll press Ctrl Z to undo and to get the text to the bottom while keeping it upright, I can simply flip the circle vertically by pressing the V key. This puts the text on the inside of the circle though so I'll need to scale it a bit more. I also want to change a few things with the text, so I'll select it and press the T key to go to the text tool. First I'll make the size of the text a bit larger. Then I'll add some spacing between the letters. And I might need to go back to the select tool and change the size of the circle again. Alright, now like with the top text, I want to cut this text out of the gray path. So first I'll select it and turn it into a path with the shortcut shift control c Then I'll ungroup it with shift control g do the union path operation with control plus, hold shift and select the gray path, and do a difference with control minus. I also won't be needing the circle with a red stroke anymore. Okay next, I want to cut some parts out of the sides of the inner gray path. To do this I'll first go to the squares and rectangles tool and create a rectangle starting about right here to the left of the inner gray path 
and drag it out to about right here on the right side. I'll give this a red fill with about 50% opacity and I'll turn off the stroke by holding shift and clicking the X. Okay, now I'll go to the select tool and duplicate the rectangle. Then I'll bring it up here and use the top scale handle to reduce the height a bit. Now I'll duplicate this one and bring it down here. I want to space out these three rectangles evenly, so I'll select them all. And in the align and distribute dialog, I'll click this button to put equal vertical spacing between their centers. All right, now I'll press control plus to turn the rectangles into a single path. And I want to center it horizontally in the logo, so I'll hold shift and click the inner gray path. And in the align and distribute dialog, with the last selected chosen as the anchor, I'll click this button to align them horizontally. And now I'll do a difference with control minus. All right, and now I also want to put some text in this new empty space on the sides. So I'll go to the text tool and create a text object. And I'll type ESTD, which is the abbreviation for established. For the font, I'll use railway. And this time I'll use semi bold for the style. Then I'll go to the select tool, move the text to the space here and resize it so that it fits a bit better. All right, and I'll hold shift and select one of these other paths then align them horizontally. Next, I'll select just the text object and duplicate it with the control D. Then I'll move this one to the right side, double click it to get to the text tool and change the text to 2003, which is the year Inkscape was first released. Now, a problem with the railway font is that some of the numbers are taller than the others. However, I think it actually looks all right with this logo. I'll just need to readjust the size and positioning a bit. I'm also going to cut out some stars here near the left and right sides of the bottom text. For this, I'll first go to the Stars and Polygons tool, and with the default settings chosen up here, I'll create a small star in here. To mirror this star over to the other side, I can first turn on snapping with this button up here, click the arrow, choose Advanced Mode down here, and turn on snapping to object rotation centers. Now with the Select tool, I can click the star to show the rotation handles, then grab its rotation center and bring it inside the logo until it snaps to the center of it. Then I can duplicate the star with Ctrl D and press the H key to mirror it over. Now turn the snapping back off. Alright, now I want to cut these stars out of the gray path that's under them. First, I need to turn the stars into a single path, so I'll select them both and press Ctrl plus. Now I'll hold Shift and select the gray path, then do a difference with Ctrl minus. Alright, for the final part of this logo, I'll do a search for Inkscape 2 color logo which gives me this image here, located at Wikimedia Commons. To get the SVG version of the image, I want to click the link here, then click the original file link here, right click the image, choose save as, and save it somewhere. Now I can go back to Inkscape, go to file, import, and import the image. And I can just click OK here. Alright, so this is a group of three objects, which I first want to ungroup by pressing shift Control g And I want to cut the two white paths out of the black path, so I'll select the two white paths, unit them together with Control plus hold Shift and select the black path, and do a difference with Control minus Okay, now I can hold Shift and select one of the logo paths over here, and align them vertically and horizontally. Then I'll select just the Inkscape logo, hold Shift and Control and scale it up. Finally, I want to turn all of these objects into a single path, but first, I need to turn these two small text objects into paths. So I'll select them both, do Object to Path with shift Control c then ungroup the paths with shift Control g Now I can select everything, and unit it all together with Control plus And the seal logo is basically finished. So now I'll work on giving it a nice display, in case I want to show it off to a client or something. First, I'll go to the Squares and Rectangles tool, and create a rectangle over here. I'll make it black with 100% opacity. And I want to give this a textured look, which I can do with the Noise Fill filter. So first I'll go to the Select tool and duplicate the rectangle. Then I'll go to Filters, Overlays, Noise Fill. And here I want to have the Turbulence type set to Turbulence. And in the Noise Color tab, I want to have the color set to White with a low alpha. Now I'll go back to the Options tab, check Live Preview, and I can play around with these settings if necessary. However, I think it already looks pretty good as is, so I'll click Apply and close this out. Alright, next I'm going to make it so the noise texture fades out from the top right to the bottom left. This will make it look like a light is shining in from the top right. 
To do this, I'll first give the noise texture object a linear gradient by opening the fill and stroke dialog with this button, then clicking the linear gradient button here. Now I'll go to the gradient tool, bring the opaque gradient stop to the top right, and the transparent stop to the bottom left. Now it might be difficult to see, but I currently have some banding in the gradient here at the bottom left. To fix this, I can change the color of both gradient stops to white instead of black. This makes the noise texture a bit too overpowering though, so I can go to the select tool, then at the bottom of the fill and stroke dialog, I can lower the opacity of the entire object. Alright, now I can select the logo path here, and I'll duplicate it with the control D so I can keep the original, then hold shift and select one of the rectangles, go to the align and distribute dialog, and align them vertically and horizontally. Okay, now I'll select just the logo, and I'll give it a linear gradient. I'll make the first gradient stop a bright goldish color. For the other stop, I'll raise the alpha channel all the way up, and I'll make it more of a dark orange. Okay, now I'll go to the gradient tool, and I want to move the brighter stop to the top right, and the other one to the bottom left. Okay, next I'll give the logo a bit of a shadow, so that it stands out a little more on the background. To do this, I'll go to the select tool and duplicate the logo, make it red for the moment, and click the lower selection one step button up here to put it below the logo path. Now I'll use the arrow keys to move it down and to the left some, then use the fill and stroke dialog to give it a slight blur, and make it black. It's pretty subtle, but it definitely helps. I'm also going to give the logo a textured look. To do this, I'll first duplicate the path, and this time I'll go to Filters, Overlays, Cross Noise B. That's a bit too strong, so I'll lower the opacity some. For a final touch, I'll add some reflected light at the top right. To do this, I'll go to the Squares and Rectangles tool and create a rectangle up here. I'll make it white and give it a radial gradient with this button. Now I'll blur it a lot and lower the opacity even more. And I don't want to have all of this extra part of the highlight outside of the background, so I'll select one of the background rectangles and duplicate it. Then I'll hold shift and select the highlight rectangle, right click and choose set clip. However, this messes up the blurring along the edge here. So I'll press Ctrl Z twice to undo the clipping and the blurring, and with just the highlight rectangle selected, I'll group it with Ctrl G. Now I'll duplicate the background rectangle again, hold shift and select the highlight group, right click and set clip. And our Inkscape seal logo is finished. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.